Mark, uh, what exactly is buzz marketing? Buzz marketing is essentially getting consumers and the media to talk about your brand. Um, it's creating something uh, entertaining, creating something fascinating, creating something newsworthy um, that people will talk about your brand or the media will write about your brand. Essentially, it's about starting conversations. How does buzz marketing differ from, from public relations and publicity? You know, I think it differs in, in a couple of ways, you know, versus PR and versus traditional advertising. You know, picture, if you will, kind of a, you know, the brand in the middle and the, the company in the middle and that brand sends messages out to people. Um, and that's been the traditional model, you know, to date. You know, impressions delivered, GRPs delivered, agency goes home, they punch their card. Uh, in the buzz marketing model, it's a little bit different. You do have the brand in the middle, you do have the company in the middle, uh, and you spend money to send messages out to people. Um, but the entire goal of buzz marketing is to get those people to tell to friends and those people to tell to friends and so on and so on and so on. How does uh, buzz marketing relate to what we could say is old-fashioned word of mouth? It's very much um, all about the basis of word of mouth. Um, and to a certain extent, we've, we've lost that in the era of mass marketing. Um, you know, as TV has come on uh, and, and been kind of the 800-pound gorilla of mass marketing uh, in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, it worked. You know, you pretty much had three major networks and you put an ad on TV and, and things seemed to work pretty well. And it was easy street. And then the 80s came and cable came and then media started getting fragmented more and more and more and now you know in the in the mid 90s the internet came um, and today um, instead of media outlets producing media we've got people producing media in your book you talk about the six buttons of buzz uh, could you tell us a little bit about each of those those buttons mark the six buttons of buzz um, really get back to the phenomenon that human beings are very predictable. And human beings talk about things over and over and over again and again and again. Um, I use this phrase, there's not a lot of Nietzsche being discussed at the water cooler. Uh, and although we're very intelligent human beings, we're in, in places of higher learning, um, uh, when it comes right down to it at the water cooler, uh, we talk about things that are very predictable. We talk about things that are unusual. We talk about things that are outrageous. We talk about the taboo, sex, lies. We talk about celebrity, um, etc. But you know, I'll give you an example of you know just just kind of a basic example of the outrageous. Um, you know, there's there's the question of you know, do we are we more interested in the story of you know, dog bites man, which is very you know, kind of matter of fact, of course a dog's going to bite a man or a postman, um, versus the man actually biting the dog. Um, and those are the stories, you know, all you have to do is just go to Yahoo and look at those most popular stories. There's always one unusual story, you know, like that in there. And we tend to gravitate to things that are unusual or outrageous. It's kind of basic 101. Now, let's talk about the taboo. Human beings love to talk about things they're not supposed to talk about. Um, you know, imagine you know, you've, got, uh, you've got students or you've got friends who have toddlers. And those toddlers are, I don't know, you know six months old, a year old. And, uh, and those people go to a dinner party or a cocktail party, and I guarantee you within 30 minutes they're going to be talking about duties and diapers. And guess what? You're not supposed to talk about duties and diapers at a cocktail party or dinner party. But I, you know, when I speak, I use this example and heads nod, people start to giggle and laugh. And that's what we do. We talk about things that are taboo. We talk about things we're not supposed to talk about. We talk about lies. We talk about sex. And those are all factors of, of taboo. The most powerful thing, though, we talk about, um, and it stems from you know, a, a lesson in business school as well, the most powerful thing that we talk about is secrets. Um, how many times have you heard the phrase, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but? Um, and that is a beautiful phrase that we all identify with, and we all kind of laugh when we hear that. Um, but secrets are very, very powerful. 
And it's the power of information, it's the power of knowledge, it's the power of being in the know versus being outside of the know. And people can't stand not knowing, you know, if they know that there's something in there. Um, and the power of a secret, if used well, um, is very, very demanding. And to a certain extent, word of mouth is that. You know, word of mouth works because there is an element of um, the population that doesn't know about your brand, your product, or the story. Um, but, uh, but it works well uh, if that's the case. If everyone knows about it, then no one will talk about it.